Hi everybody, my name's Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel. And we're almost, yesterday we were almost not the Yahoo and the Torah channel. Almost we were dead. Um, life out here is wild and it is, it'll always be wild. And we want to thank those who kept us in prayers yesterday and those, our family who we uh, actually consulted in when we were having some wildness which is um, a little telegram group that we have. We love you all. We really, really appreciate you all in there. And um, yesterday, Jaden and I were out uh, working where we had a, a networking service call. That we had to go work on a dude's uh, wireless stuff. And we were up in the mountains and we were driving up and it's a real narrow road. And um, Jade missed the uh, takeoff. He didn't miss to tell me where to turn off to. And so I was only about, I think I was about four or five feet past the road. And I backed up about two feet and I went right into a concrete drainage ditch. And I was on, basically we were on three wheels. And so the back um, right part of my bumper was lodged against a, um, a basically an embankment. My left uh, back wheel was was basically on the edge of a concrete um, box. It was like basically a box. And so it was one inch more backwards and we would have probably totaled the truck. And um, I've never ever um, backed, I've never gone into a ditch. I've never been into a wreck like that. And so it was the first time, uh, I guess, for everything. And um, I get out there and look at the truck and is literally on three wheels. Um, we don't know exactly what to do, and so um, and there's no there's no cell service up in the mountains, and um, we are the only gringos around. Uh, and th what that means is uh, that means there's like no support structure for you. If you were a brown skinned uh, fella from down here in this uh, civilization then everybody would come from all around and come and help you and try to fix you. But if you are the white gringo, they will just stare at you and then they will point to a house that's up the side of a mountain and say, hey, another gringo lives up there. So <laughs> it's like, go help, go go get the white folks to help you. And so that's essentially what Jade did. And Jade is only on one foot because he still has ankle issues. He can't even basically walk around. So he's gimping way up a mountain range to go find this other with the guy we we're actually doing the service call for. So he comes down and he has a Toyota Hilux and I'm in a Toyota Tundra and my Tundra is big. It is way bigger than these Hiluxes. It is a very large uh, truck. So we didn't know what to do. So we chained up to that thing and um, we had basically one shot at getting out of this ditch. Um, and that includes petrol. That includes the vertical pedal on the right and rotting that sucker. Um, we caught air. The truck almost tipped over on the way out. I don't even know what I saw. What I did see, because I got into it and it started tipping and I'm like, you know what? I'm not going over like this. And I just hit the pedal down and it blasted up out of, it felt like it blasted up out. Now, Jade will have to tell you exactly what it looked like from the other side because I don't know. There was a, a bunch of um, cowboys, like the, uh, the the Panamanian cowboys that were like sitting on their horses watching it. We had we had people like watching it, little kids across the road, a mom across the road, two guys on horses. And everybody, when I got out of that thing, they were like, oh, I heard, whoa, whoa. And it was like gringo loco and or loco gringo. And I, I couldn't remember exactly what happened. Jade, what did that look like popping up out of that cement thing? Um, at one point, it looked like uh, when you started pulling, the first pull didn't make it, uh, so he had, he had to try it again. And then when he started pulling, uh, I started reversing his truck, pull our truck out. Uh, our truck was tipping to the right. Like it was about to flip over on the side. It was going down the hill, right? Yeah, it was like going towards the right. Yeah, and about that time, I, I was up basically in the air on three wheels. That's where I decided that I was going to pull the whistling diesel on it and um, crank that up. And all of a sudden, it hit, landed back on its side, so it was good. Landed yeah. on, on its wheel. Yeah, for anybody who doesn't know who whistling diesel is, he's this young kid on YouTube with about six million subs, and he destroys every car that he ever gets into because he's always testing the cars out like to the to where there's nothing left of the car and so anyway we flipped that sucker out of there now it was crazy though this is the miracle the miracle is the way it went in we should have totally toasted the oil pan or the gas 
Um, everything it, underneath of it should have been totally wrecked. It was a miracle how it went in, and how it went out. The way we didn't sustain any damage, not a leak, not nothing. I mean, when it hit when it hit the ground, when it come out of there, it was like bam. Not a single thing happened at all, and so we survived. Now another crazy thing, as we and I, I know this isn't like Boss Clan hour, but. Um, yesterday afternoon, we, uh, we live out in the middle of a jungle and these are all examples of how Yah supernaturally saves us and coming out the ditch in the ditch and out of the ditch, we were completely saved like over and over and over and over the hands of Yah save us. Now, yesterday we were doing our stuff down here in the middle of the jungle, which is, you can't just come down to our house. If you end up at our house, you're extremely lost or you've figured out how to make it down there, but it's not really, uh, you can't really get through it. It's really hard to even drive down here. The roads are all really jacked up coming in and out of this place. So yesterday afternoon, we, we had this, this old timer that just came wandering out of nowhere. And he was very, very drunk. And um, the, uh, the dogs, the dogs don't take to anybody coming around at all. And so we haven't had anybody for a very, very, very long time. So the dogs all broke out yesterday, and we and we could not get the old timer to leave. We, he did not understand. He needs to walk down the road away from the dogs, and he's like, "No, the dogs just don't know me." And we're like, "Dude, these dogs will tear you up. Please, you must leave now." We couldn't get him to leave, and so finally we got him some water, and I had Jaden walk him up the road, um, and we we didn't know where we didn't know have no idea where he was going, or he he didn't either. Uh, he was kind of incoherent as well. Uh, but we knew he's drunk, and every once in a while we have these these guys that drink a tremendous amount, and they come wandering through here. So anyway, he takes off, and then last night about eight o'clock, there was tinking on our fence, and we had no idea that none of the stuff ever really happens out here. So we walk outside, and the old man is like he's like slumped against our fence. Um, Jay, what did he say, or who did, who went out there? Kate, you went, did. what did he say when he went out there? Tell us, uh, tell us what the old time. First, said. everything was just incoherent. He had like he couldn't even form a sentence really. Something about like his phone, and then he's talking about his yard, and then his wife, and his kids, and all. And it was nothing was coherent. So I'm like, "Where is your family?" And he just he couldn't hear me unless like unless it was like he wanted water. He bring me some water. I just want some water. He goes, "Can I come sleep in your his house?" Yeah. And I'm like. Yeah, and I didn't know what to do. I mean, you can't, there's no way in the world we could ever bring anyone in the house, or you can't even bring anyone in the yard. Not safely. I mean, you can bring them in there, but I don't know what would happen. And um, so we have an old Dodge Durango that uh, was was broken down out there without the seats in it. So we put him in there, and we got him blankets, we got him some chicken, we got him some water, and um, he's out there right now as we speak. So we're kind of giving it a little bit of time, which watching the sun come up, because we can't let the dogs out, and we can't let the old timer out. And we don't even know if this guy's still alive in there. Um, he was extremely drunk. And um, I know my Durango's going to smell very bad. And <clears throat> so we still have to get rid of the old timer. So anyway, that is the story of Boss Clan. That is the, our wild world here. Gentlemen, how you guys doing? Good, good. Guys, Yah's Scriptures is the only English translation that is completely awesome. It is it is very, very good translation. I'm going to keep plugging this. We found our new guy in India. We are working through this right now. We're getting timelines. So it's again, we have to reprocess this, but we are back on track. Um, if you want to purchase this, it is $64. Those who purchase it are in line. We will ship the first people to the, the ones that we have orders first. So if you still want to get in line, please do. If you would like the free download of it, the free download is right here as well. And we have a lot of people that are downloading the uh, uh, the eSword version of it. And we have a lot of feedback on that as well. And so if you have eSword, this version, all this stuff is completely free. Everything. And so your PDFs are free. Um, this is free. And the Google app is coming along very nicely. And it will be done hopefully very, very soon. Now, guys, you can purchase small books on Amazon. And 100% of these proceeds go into the prisoners ministry where we are attempting to print scriptures get them into the prisoners we have shipped a tremendous amount of scriptures already into our brothers and sisters in chains and we have made a huge difference already if you guys know brothers or sisters in prison that need a scriptures please email us so we can get a hold of them find out where they are at and get them scriptures and so we have we still have a tremendous amount of other scriptures, the Hallelujah scriptures, the big, nice, beautiful scriptures that we're printing out. We still have a bunch of those that brothers and sisters in the States are shipping to our brothers and sisters until we can get our scriptures up and running. So if you know anyone there, um, let us know. 
Gentlemen, you guys ready to rock? Jade, yep. you can't give us a breakdown of what happened yesterday because you were not here. Cade, what happened? I can do it. Eli, uh, do it. So yesterday, Shaul, he started his uh, reign. He said he, he was dot, dot years old and started his reign. And he, he, he said he's dot, dot years old. Dot, dot, dot years old. I, I know. Yeah. I, but it, for anybody who didn't right. listen to yesterday's stuff, it, it, it begins and it says Shaul was dot, dot, dot years old. And they don't really have the right translation. In, in the King James Version, it's in parentheses. So they don't know. They think he's around 40 years old. So go on. Then he went to war with the Pelishites. He destroyed one of their watch posts. Then he starts a huge war, and he was supposed to wait for Shemuel for seven days, and Shemuel never showed up, so he decided to make a burnt offering. And then Shemuel shows up, and he asks him what he's done. He says that since he wasn't there, he was worried, and he was trying to appease Yahuwah. And then it, he basically got the reign taken from him from his next generations. Okay. All right. You guys ready to rock? Yep. Okay. And it came to be one day that Yehonathan, son of Shaul, said to the young man who bore his armor, Come, and let us go over to the outpost of the Pelishites, which is on the other side. But he did not inform his father. And Shaul remained at the outskirts of Gibeah, under a pomegranate tree at Migron. And the people who were with him were about 600 men. And Akiyahu, son of Akatub, and Ichabod's brother, son of Pinkas, son of Eli, the Kohen of Yahuwah in Shiloh, was wearing a shoulder garment. And the people did not know that Yehonathan had gone. And between the passes by which Yehonathan sought to go over to the outposts of the Pelishites, there was an edge of a rock on one side and an edge of a rock on the other side. And the name of one was Botsets, and the name of the other, Sina. The one edge was on the north opposite Michmash, and the other on the side opposite Giba. And Yehonathan said to the young men who bore his armor, Come, and let us go to the outpost of these uncircumcised. If so be... Yahuwah works for us, for there is no hindrance for Yahuwah, save by many or by few. And his armor bearer said to him, Do all that is in your heart. Incline yourself. See, I am with you, according to your heart. And Yehonathan said, See, we are passing over to the men, and show ourselves to them. If they say this to us, Wait until we come to you, then we shall stand still in our place and not go up to them. But if they say <clears throat> this, Come up to us. Then we shall go up, for Yahuwah has given them into our hand, and this is the sign to us. And both of them disclosed themselves to the outposts of the Pelishites, and the Pelishites said, See, the Ibrim are coming out of the holes where they have hidden. And the men of the outpost called to Yehonathan and his armor bearer and said, Come up to us, and let us teach you a lesson. Then Yehonathan said to his armor bearer, Come up after me, for Yahuwah has given them into the hand of Yisrael. And Yehonathan climbed up on his hands and knees with his armor bearer after him, and they fell before Yehonathan, and his armor bearer was putting them to death behind him. And that first slaughter which Yehonathan and his armor bearer made was about 20 men in about a half a yoke furrow field. I don't know what a yoke furrowed field is. Yeah, I don't know what that is either. But they did uh, pretty good for just those two. Yeah, pretty good. And there was trembling in the camp in the field, and among all the people, the outposts and the raiders also trembled, and the ground shook, and it became a trembling of Elohim. And the watchmen of Shal and Giba of Benjamin looked and saw the crowd melting away, and they went here and there. And Shal said to the people who were with him, Please inspect and see who has gone from us. So they inspected and saw that Yehonathan and his armor bearer were missing. And Shal said to Abi Akiyahu, Bring the ark of Elohim here. For the ark of Elohim was with the children of Israel on that day. And it came to be while Shal talked to the Kohen that the no noise which was in the camp of the Pelishites went on and became great. So Shal said to the Kohen, Withdraw your hand. Okay, what do you guys think about What do you guys think of that thing? He like he brought the ark to them and then he says, Um, did they did they put their they didn't put their hand on this thing right? I don't know. It's sort of draw your hand, whatever that means. Maybe it's like a hand over it. Maybe he's like hand on Shaul. We know you can't not touch like the you ark. Can't, you can't touch the dying. ark. You can touch the pole, but you can't touch the ark. Even if you're priest, you're still dead. Yeah. So I don't know what that was about. Um, anyone have thoughts anywhere so far? No, I'm not sure what the draw your hand is. Maybe it's lifting up. I mean, we know. I maybe it's something like Moses, where Moses lifted up his hand for the battle because he says here there's a great noise at camp. So maybe it's like. Lifting up his hand to win or something. I don't know. Weird. Okay. And Shaul was called, and all the people who were with him, and they went to the battle. And see, every man's sword was against his neighbor. A very great confusion. And the Ibrahim, who were with the Pelishites before that time, who went up with them into the camp, turned around. They, they too, to be with Yisrael, 
who were with Shal and Yehonathan. And all the men of Yisrael who had hidden in the mountains of Ephraim heard that the Pelashites fled, and they also pursued them in the battle. Thus Yahuwah saved Yisrael that day, and the battle passed over to Bet Awen. And the men of Yisrael were distressed that day, for Shaul had placed the men under an oath, saying, Cursed be the man who eats food until evening, and I have taken revenge on my enemies. Therefore none of the people tasted food. And all the land came into the woods, and there was honey on the ground. And the people came into the woods and saw the honey dripping, but no one put his hand to his mouth, for the people revered the oath. But Yehonathan had not heard that his father had taken an oath of the people, and he stretched out the end of the rod that was in his hands and dipped it in a honeycomb and put, it to, put his hand to his mouth, and his eyes lit up. Then one of the people said, Your father strictly took an oath of the people, saying, Cursed be the man who eats food today. And the people were weary. So I feel like this guy waited until he, till he, <coughs> till he ate the food to tell him, because, I mean, this dude probably saw the whole thing going down. Like, he just said, Hey, wait, your dad took an oath, but this dude waited until after he ate. Maybe. That's one way they could look at it, or the guy was looking the other way, and Jonathan, he looked back, and the dude was sitting there sucking on the end of a rod that had honey on it. Okay, uh, and Jonathan said, My father has troubled the land. Now see how my eyes lit up when I tasted a little of this honey. How much better if the people had eaten, had well eaten today of the spoil of their enemies, which they found. For then would not the smiting among the Pelashites have been greater? And they smote the Pelashites that day from Michmash to Aelon. So the people were very weary, and the people pounced on the spoil and took sheep and cattle and calves and slaughtered them on the ground. And the people ate with the blood. All right, what what, what are we talking about here? Uh, well, I mean, the usual like, just just sacrifice, but uh, I don't think like they don't. It's like they didn't cook it or something. Yeah, so they ate they ate it in the blood, and um, you might as well let that hint out as well. Okay, and uh, yeah, let's not. Sorry, guys, we're trying to deal with the uh, passed out old man in the truck. <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> And the people ate with the blood. Uh, not a good thing, right? Why, why is it not good to eat with the blood? I mean, blood? there's so many laws and commands in the Torah that says, do not eat the blood. I mean, blood is life. So these dudes are here, like, like they're so hungry that they become like savage beasts and started eating just like raw meat or something. Yeah. And they told Shaul, saying, look, the people are sinning against Yahuwah by eating with the blood. And he said, you have acted treacherously. Roll a large stone to me today. And Shaul said, disperse among the people and say to them, each one bring his ox near to me. And each one his sheep, and you shall slaughter them here and eat. And do not sin against Yahuwah by eating with the blood. So every one of the people brought his ox with him that night and slaughtered it there. And Shaul built an altar to Yahuwah. It was the first altar he built to Yahuwah. And Shaul said, Let us go down after the Pelashites by night and plunder them until the morning light, and not leave a man of them. And they said, Do whatever seems good to you. But the Kohim said, Let us draw near to Elohim here. And Shaul asked of Elohim, Should I go down after the Pelashites? Do you give them into the hand of Yisrael? But he did not answer him that day. Now, when I was reading the book of Josephus, the book of Josephus, he's convinced that every time people inquire of, of Yahuwah, that it is with the ermine and the thuman, that, that, that stone mm -hmm. that they were talking about. And so Shaul would have gone, Do, should I go after the Pelashites and whatever the rock would, I don't, I don't know how it was that they could not pull a rock out of their, um, their, their garments, but um, I believe that's what they're talking about with that. 38, and Shaul said, come over here, all you chiefs of the people, and know and see what this sin was today. For as Yahuwah lives, who saves Yisrael, though it be in Yehonathan my son, he shall certainly die. But not one among all the people answered him. And he said to all Yisrael, you be on one side, and my son Yehonathan and I be on the other side. And the people said to Shaul, do what seems good to you. Then Shaul said to Yahuwah, Elohim of Yisrael, give a perfect one. And Shaul and Yehonathan were taken, but the people escaped. And Shaul said, cast between my son Yehonathan and me. And Yehonathan was taken. Shaul then said to Yehonathan, explain to me what you have done. And Yehonathan explained to him and said, I only tasted a little honey with the end of the rod that was in my hand. See, let me die. And Shaul answered, Elohim do to you and more also, for you shall certainly die, Yehonathan. This was his son. This was right. his kid. It's like, John, Yehonathan didn't know, but it's like, so can he, should he be punished because he, did, because he didn't know about the oath? Yeah, I don't know. 45. But the people said to Shaul, should Jonathan die, who has wrought this great deliverance in Yisrael? Far be it! 
As Yahuwah lives, let not one hair of his head fall to the ground, for he is wrought with Elohim this day. Thus the people rescued Jehonathan, and he did not die. And Shaul returned from pursuing the Pelashites, and the Pelashites went to their own place. And Shaul took the reign over Israel and fought against all his enemies round about, against Moab, and against the children of Ammon, and against Edom, and against the sovereigns of Zobah, and against the Pelashites. And wherever he turned, he caused trouble. And he gathered an army and smote the Amalekites and delivered Yisrael from the hands of those who plundered them. And the sons of Shaul were Yehonathan and Yishwi and Malkishi. And the names of his two daughters were these, the name of the firstborn, Merav, and the name of the younger, Michal. And the name of Shaul's wife was Akinam, the daughter of Akimatz. And the name of the commander of the army was Abner, son of Ner, uncle of Shaul. And Kish was the father of Shaul, and Ner, the father of Abner, was the son of Abiel. And there was fierce fighting against the Pelashites all the days of Shaul. And when Shaul saw any mighty man or brave man, he took him for himself. Okay, that was a lot of stuff there to, uh, to put down. Um, These are the good days of King Shaul. Yep. Probably, probably the best of it. Yep, and so these are these are the days of the legend of Shaul, and you know, as you guys can see, Shaul started off on the right side, which a lot of us do, and a lot of us end up on the wrong side, which is what Shaul did, and so we need to be very astute in keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments. We need to be Torah keepers. We need to be those people who are willing to be obedient to our Creator because that is what He's requested for us, for us to be saved. And so here we are, and guys, uh, we hope that we didn't bore you guys to death. We have to go deal with some stuff right now. We appreciate you guys. We love you all. We hope you have a wonderful day, and we're out. All right, All right. shalom. shalom.